So like many people, uh, I come from a very broken home. Uh, at six years old, my mom was admitted to her first psych ward and my dad took custody of me. And there began a journey of my mom's addiction, watching my mom struggle to find fulfillment in drugs and watching my dad just party and drink. And, and that was my example of fulfillment also. Um, so at a very young age, I learned that substances could bring you joy or help you get through a hard time or even numb you to where you weren't dealing with anything. When I was 10, I think set in the reality of just how broken and destructive the world was. And I was, I was molested and that created a hole in my heart that, um, that life just continued to dig in and dig in and dig in and break and break and break. My dad, he, he went to prison and I was left on my own with my mother who was still struggling in her addiction. And house after house we were evicted and um, it just seemed like life kept piling it on, piling it on. And there was no light at the end of the tunnel. There was nothing that made me think that things got better. So I just assumed that this was life. This is what it gave you and this is what it was. At 18, being a product of my environment, I immediately entered into a very unhealthy relationship. Uh, it was very physically and mentally abusive on both ends. And this is when I learned that I wasn't worth anything. And this is when the lie started that no one wanted me and I would never be loved. And I would just continue this cycle of brokenness that my parents began when I was little. And anything that I could get to fill that void, I went after, whether it was drugs or alcohol or sex or anything that gave me that temporary pleasure, I would seek it. And it did just that. It, it gave me temporary pleasure. Um, it wasn't until that relationship ended that I was in the hole at the very bottom. And that was when I think um, all hope was lost. Literally seven nights out of the week, I was in a bar. I was drunk every night, getting home at six in the morning, trying to be functional for work at eight. Um, I had no money. I was so, I was drowning. I was in so much debt. I was behind on all my bills. Um, I kept seeking to find love and marriage and everything was just falling from underneath me. And it was one of those nights in one of those bars that I, I met the, the girl who planted the seed that would soon change my life. She radiated and I was instantly drawn to her. And as we got to talking, she began to share about her church and pulled out an invite card and, and told me that I should come check it out. And I knew that there was something different and I knew that I wanted what she had. We exchanged numbers that night and about a week later, she texted me and, you know, hey girl, you coming to church? I so badly wanted to say no, but something would not let me. And so um, I meet her there and immediately when I walk in, I felt a presence that I had never felt before. I immediately start crying. It was very overwhelming. Um, and so as worship continues, I'm a big mess on the floor and um, message was great, spoke right to me. But at the end, the very end, um, the pastor begins to tell the story of Jesus and that he loved me. And something in me opened, and it opened to this man and this God. 
And in that moment, I knew that I was gonna walk out of there changed. And right there is when I accepted Jesus in my, in my heart and made Him Lord of my life, and I have never regretted it since. He made the darkness turn to light. Everything that I had been through in my childhood, He used it to show me a new way. He used it to help me see life differently. And He used it to help me appreciate His goodness and His sovereignty and His faithfulness. And that started a journey that I'm still on and that I'm forever thankful for. And so little by little, I started to pray, God, take away anything in me that is not of you. I'm gonna do this your way. Slowly, he took away the, the, the want to drink and he took away the want to be stoned all the time. And he took away the want to be promiscuous. And about six months into this, um, journey of being abstinence, I met my husband. One of the first scriptures that I ever memorized was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. You seek His will in all you do, and He will make your path straight. And by all means, I have not reached a point to where I don't have bad habits or I don't sin, but I'm so thankful for that gift of repentance, for that place that I can, I can go before God and I can say, God, you're gracious and you're merciful and you love me. And so God, I know that this is not of you. Help me to change it. Help me to do it a different way. And he never looks at you and says, no, not this time. He's always faithful to do it, always.